just got this in the mail today, Tascam 464 Porter Studio. Worked on this one a couple of times before, I mean not this exact unit, but this model I mean. I've um, got some spares kicking about, so pretty confident I can get it working. A certain amount of dirt. And a certain amount of neglect. I was noticing as I was taking it out of the packaging, I wonder if I can see, yeah, like, there's even a little bit of rubber band in the bottom of the master fader. Um, so yeah, pretty dirty. Probably going to need a decent clean. It's plugged in. Yeah, so it's powering up. I don't know how. You can probably just about see that. Mm, squeaking noises coming from in there. So, hmm. so that's loose. It's not the end of the world. Still keeps some of the sound in, some of the dust out. Um, might be there's a little bit of broken plastic inside there I can fix. Take this position one ferric tape out of there. Not too keen on that. Um, capstan isn't turning. I, from memory, I think this is one of the models where it should be turning all the time. I think that's just. Um, I'm, I'm feeling for a switch in there. I think that's just uh, record enable or disable. You know, depending whether you break this tab or not to stop it from you know recording over your amazing demo. Well, let's see whether we get any playback or record. So it's not playing. Well, one of the things that often goes wrong with these, this is like one generation after the 244 and the 246. So I think I'm right in seeing the transport still running off three motors. One's turning a flywheel that turns the capstan. There's a separate one that controls a mechanism that um, turns the reels. And then there's a third motor that changes what mode you're in. A bit effectively, it's um, raising and lowering the magnetic heads. It's somewhat more miniaturized and one of the ways that a miniaturized happened is instead of there being a rubber band between the control motor and all the kind of cams and stuff, there's there's a series of cogs and gears. That seems like a good idea, you know, it's like one less rubber part to deteriorate, right? Except, I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm speculating that one of those gears they just got from a different manufacturer and it's a different kind of plastic. But basically, one of those three gears crumbles really easily. There's been... Let's, let's say I've had four of these before. Two of them, that had happened. And another one, I just replaced it just in case. Uh, you can't get the parts from Tascam anymore. Um, there are people who are moulding replacement parts out of resin and selling them, but, you know, they cost a lot. Um, for what they are. I, I think, like, last time I looked, you could get one for, like, 25 quid from Germany, which, if you're in the UK like me, is not too bad an option, but I, on one occasion, I paid nearly 60 quid, including postage, for this little piece of moulded plastic. I mean, fortunately, it was for one of these that I only got for, like, £30 or something, so, um, yeah, it ended up costing me, like, £100 in parts, and I was still able to get more than 200 selling it on. Um, so it was worth it to do that. The reason I'm telling you that is that usually when that happens, what happens is these buttons will flash, all three of them will flash, and all the transport buttons will be completely unresponsive. And I guess that's basically the logic circuit in here is going, hang on, the motor's turning, but I'm not reaching the you know resistance value or however it is that I'm measuring that that cog has turned enough. Ah, what's going on? Flash, flash, flash. Because that's not happening, that suggests to me that that cog in there is still okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, so fast forward and rewind seem to be working well. So nothing wrong with the idler motor. Let's have a look. Is this? Yeah, and you can see when it, when it plays, like the... The head is coming up. It's just immediately retracting because the cap stand's not turning. So uh, the whole assembly that goes from the control motor to uh, the magnetic heads, that's fine. So I think probably, I, because I can hear the motor turning, the cap stand motor, I think we've basically just got a belt there. You know, either a snapped or a completely gooey or just a bit of a loose belt. There was a previous video where I did a series of preliminary tests of a mixer on a 424 Mark III. 
I'll, I'll put the link in the description, right? Um, so if you're kind of like, you're on this video because I've got a Porter Studio and I don't know what to do to establish whether the mixer's working, you can refer to that video instead. I don't see the point in filming and narrating the whole thing. So I'll go um, off camera just now and test that and report back. And then um, after that, we'll start stripping this down.